We're going to take another look at one-dimensional kinematics. This one's going to be a little more complicated. This time, it's going to be about a tennis ball that I'm going to toss straight up into the air. Let's go with about 1.5 meters height. I'm going to throw it up from here, and then it's going to fall down. I'm going to let it fall down to the ground. Okay, so we've got me here holding the tennis ball, and I throw it up in the air at a height of about 1.5 meters above the ground, which this guy's at zero meters. It's going to go up in the air and then fall back down because I've given it an initial velocity. I'll also tell you that when it left my hand, its initial velocity was three meters per second. Now, because of the way that I've drawn this out and the way that we're used to, we're going to declare our coordinate system where up is the positive y direction. Okay? And our initial velocity is going up, so it's a positive, not a negative. So we're in good shape on that. All right, so now we want to begin solving things, dealing with the problem. I'll tell you, as you will often be told in problems, what people are looking for. I am looking for the time. I want to know how long it takes for the ball to go up in the air and come down and hit the ground. So let's take a look at our two questions, what we want and what we have. Well, what we want is right here. It's the time. It's the thing that I told you I want. In the end, it's what we're trying to solve for. OK, so let's take a look at what we have. Going across our variables, we have delta y. Do we have that? Let's see. Well, delta y is nothing more than y final minus y initial. We know our initial position, which is 1.5. We know our final position, which is 0, both of which in meters. So we have 0 minus 1.5 equals negative 1.5 and meters, because we had meters along with all of that. OK, so we have our delta y, which is cool. Final velocity. Well, we weren't told that. We might be able to find it, but for now, it's not what we're looking for. So let's skip over that. Initial velocity. That was something that we were given. That's 3 meters per second. Okay, time, well, time is what we're looking for. I'm going to put a star by that because that's what we want. And then finally, acceleration. The acceleration in the y is little g, which we have seen many times before. It is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. It is negative because gravity is accelerating downward, or accelerates things downward, I should say. Okay, so taking our usual approach, we are not interested in so it would seem, and do not have our final velocity. So we want to use the equation that does not have that in it. Looking in our column, that gets us down to the second equation, which is one of our more common ones. You'll see that it crops up a lot. That is delta y equals our initial velocity times time plus 1 half a t squared. OK? So. If I put some of my numbers in here so I have an idea of what it looks like, 1.5 meters, negative, times, or equals, I should say, 3 meters per second times time, plus 1 half negative 9.81 meters per second squared times time squared. Uh-oh. We don't have any convenient zeros like we have in the past. In fact, that looks like a quadratic, or as I like to call it, a quadratic. I don't like those. Um, let's see if we can bypass that, because we, we could probably put it into a, a calculator or something and get the answer, or, heaven forbid, plug it into the quadratic equation and get an answer. But I'd like to avoid that, because I, I just don't like dealing with them. Quadratics are kind of a pain. So let's backtrack a moment. Maybe there's a way around this. Why don't we take a look and see if we can find our final velocity here. And when we have that, maybe we can use a different equation that's a bit prettier. OK, so let's take a side step to see if we can get out of this quadratic nightmare. So if I'm going to bypass my time for now and try and find my final velocity, then I kind of switch things out. I still know the other stuff, so this time I'll be ignoring t, at least for the immediate part. So that forces me to use equation number four, 
the fourth one down, the only one that re doesn't rely on time. And that is my final velocity squared equals my initial velocity squared plus 2 times my acceleration times delta y. Okay. Well, I can get my final velocity itself. Pretty easy to solve. Just take the square root. So v1 equals the square root of 3 meters per second squared plus 2 times negative 9.81 meters per second squared times negative 1.5 meters. I'll extend my radical there. V1 equals, get my calculator, negative 9.81, there goes my marker, times negative 1.5 times 2 equals, this part is 29.43, and this part is 9 meters per second squared is meters squared per second squared. Over here we've got meters per second squared times a meter. Okay, their units work out. Both of them are dealing with meters squared per second squared, which is great, because that means we can add them together. Their units agree. All right, so if I add them together, I'll end up with our final velocity equals the square root of 38.43, and that is going to equal 6.20, that was meters squared per second squared, and we take the square root, so we end up with meters per second. Cool. That's our final velocity. Quick question though, because again, we've got this square root, we technically have two answers. This could be positive or negative. Taking a look back at our problem, the final velocity is right before it crashes into the ground here. So most likely the velocity is pointed down. We want our minus. Okay? So now we know that v final equals negative 6.20 meters per second. Cool. Now we can go back and solve for time. You know, along the equations up here, the one that I kind of like the most is probably the first one. It's got time in there, and it doesn't look like it's a whole lot of math. So I've got v final equals v initial plus, oops, a t. Okay. So if I solve for t, I'm going to subtract off v initial from both sides. I end up with v final minus v initial equals a t. I'm going to divide both sides by a. And so I end up with t equals v final minus v initial over a. I'm going to plug those in. My v final was negative 6.20 minus 3, all of which is meters per second, divided by negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So I'm going to evaluate that. So we'll have 6.20, oops, negative 6.20 minus 3 divided by negative 9.81. And I end up with t equals 0 0.938 seconds. Let's double check those units. We have meters per second up here divided by meters per second squared. Our meters will cancel out. One of the seconds is going to cancel out. And we have seconds down in the denominator of the denominator. So we would get rid of it there by multiplying by one over second, or seconds over one. That would cancel the other one out. And we're left with just seconds at the top, which is great because those are the units for time. So here we go. We found our time. Now, as a reminder, the steps we used were we drew out what we were looking at so that we could get our information pretty effectively. We asked our two questions, what do we want, what do we have, and we filled that in. We used that information to select which of our equations we would use. And in this case, we branched out a little bit because our direct approach was going to give us an unpleasant mathematics problem to solve. So we took a side, a, a shortcut, so to speak. We went off the other way. We found something we wouldn't normally go for because that's going to make our math much easier. And if the math is much easier, you're far less likely to make a mistake. So we took a sidetrack, went after our impact velocity. We had to be very careful that once we got that square root back over here, that we remembered that the velocity is in the negative direction. 
but we incorporated that and we ended up with our answer. Once we had our final velocity, we could go back with any of the equations we liked and we could get my end thing that I wanted, which was the time. It will take 0.938 seconds for the ball to hit the ground. 